So, Dr. Smith, give us the six points. I'm ready to write. All right, good. First thing. Now, the authors make the claim that supplements, certain supplements, increase mortality. However, the authors, this is number one point, the authors did not confirm through blood testing, for instance, if the study participants were actually using the supplements. Now, you have to consider that this is very important because if you're going to blame something for an outcome, you need to be able to show the, the, the validity of your research that, the, that that outcome is based on true use of that drug or supplement. Right, and not, and, right not, not, not just coincidental. Yeah, and they did not do that. Now, consider this. The authors believe that iron, for instance, played a major role maybe in the increased mortality, yet they never once checked one person's iron blood levels to see if there was really an increase in iron blood levels in that supplement user group. That would have been the appropriate thing to do when you find that type of finding. They completely ignored checking blood levels, but they went with the conclusion that iron increased mortality. You follow that? Yeah. Also understand, too, that they didn't really distinguish between the, the groups enough in, in the sense that it turns out that many of the women who were taking the iron in the supplement group – they had a prescription from their doctor at high doses. This wasn't iron ah, found in supplements. This wasn't something off the ca- over the counter. This was no, prescribed- no. We, we, they actually were given prescription iron uh, for different reasons. And we know that when you give prescription iron, it is associated with a lot of things if you don't follow iron blood levels. So they did not confirm if the women were taking the supplements. And they didn't just double check on something like iron blood levels, which is not hard to do, when they found that, uh, that increased uh, uh, mortality. So right there, that's number one. They didn't confirm anything. You follow that? Gotcha. That's number one. And that, number- and that you know what? And, and that's, that's like if, if you were trying to prove that a supplement worked – and you took this same approach, it would be discarded as, as inappropriate uh, uh, No one would even – you wouldn't even – you'd be laughed at. Right, right. You would be laughed at. So there was no confirmation that they were actually taking the supplements. And we know – and also remember, too, when they did these surveys, they only did the, – they only asked three times. They asked – I can't remember the exact years, but in what, eight or nine years of this population study, or a little bit longer than that, they only asked three times whether they were taking supplements. I, can barely, I, can, I can't even remember if I, if I took everything this morning, Carl. So we know right there that surveys are notoriously unreliable. Well, not only that, but you know, you know what, you know what, and the the way the question is posed makes a difference too. I would like to see the the survey. But yeah, okay. you can. I think that you can get that full survey. But let's just let's stick to the point right. here. Number one, number one. Go ahead. They didn't confirm anything. Okay. That's number one. Okay. Number two. Number two. The study attempted to compare two different groups, right? Uh, those that were supplement users. Right, and those that were not supplement users. However, there were so many other differences between the two groups that really drawing any conclusion is completely absurd. You have to understand that um, they basically compared two groups that were not exactly the same. They had too many differences. This is known in statistics. This is a true statistical phrase. It's called study heter- uh, heterogeneous. It's uh, or um, heterogeneous. It means that you, you're comparing truly apples to oranges. And you, you cannot call or come to any conclusions when you have two massively different groups and with that, uh, with that type of, um, uh, with that type of study design. So the true, the two groups were too different. They didn't hold constant enough variables. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes perfect sense because. Number two. That was want, number want, two. Okay, so good. Next. All right. Number three. We already talked about this and this is important. They used questionnaires. Period. Uh, that right there, if, if anybody knows about science, the minute I just said that, they're going to laugh right there. Questions, questionnaires are unreliable, period. They, you, you can't really rely on them to collect anything, especially when you then try to use those questionnaires to do what? Draw statistical conclusions. Why? But why? But, okay, that's one that I didn't know. So why won't a questionnaire work? First of all, are these self-executed questionnaires or they have somebody asking the questions? No, they, they're mailed out. Okay. They fill them out and then they mail them back in, which is the worst type of questionnaire, by the way. Yeah, because they, I can tell you, I can tell you the being in the radio business that that those those statistics are so flawed that yeah. uh, that Arbitron had to go to people meters because those and, statistics meant nothing. And it goes back to that first point that they didn't confirm anything. If you're and, here, and here's it's a very simple thing to do. If you're going to base a statistical conclusion, which they did, right? They, they made it sound like that there was this huge mortality difference, correct? Right. Which there really isn't. If you're going to do that off a questionnaire, you at least have to go back to point number one and do what? 
Confirm. You have to have a better way. You can't draw your conclusions yet. You need to extend the study. You need to switch from a survey study to an actual like blood testing study right. where you're looking at blood levels of iron, for instance, the one that they think is the culprit. They didn't do any of that. They drew their conclusion based off a questionnaire, and they did not confirm a thing. And right there, it's over with. Game but, over. But but maybe I don't know if I missed something, and my brain was was parked at the time you said it. But the pro, the flaw the flaw <laughs> the flaw in questionnaires is what that people don't answer honestly, or oh yeah, there's oh all kinds of people don't remember. They, it's it's not don't it's not that people are being dishonest. Well, sometimes they are right. But it's not really that. It's just that people cannot remember. People cannot recall what they did. And when you're, when you're looking at many years of supplement users and you only ask them at three points, like uh, separated by about five or six years, and you're asking them how their supplement intake was over the past five years, I mean, come on. I barely remember what I did last week, Carl. I'm right. not kidding you. So, so it's not that people are – and some people are dishonest, but it's more – it's just you're asking people to remember, to recall what their, what their lifestyle was, what their behavior was. Um, over an extended period of time. Do you, would you trust that? And here's the thing. It's not to say that questionnaires are wrong. They're, they're a decent way to gather information, but to generate a hypothesis, not to generate a statistical conclusion, which is what they did in the study. Right. You follow that? Right. I got okay. it. Okay. So that, so we got did not confirm. You have these two really different groups. Yeah. They use questionnaires. There's your first three. Heterogeneity. Okay. Yeah. And they use so, questionnaires. That's the first three. Okay. So now we're going to go to the fourth one. In the study, this is number four. Okay. The supplement use group, they were not correlated to baseline pre-existing diseases. So they were, they not, were not corrected. For heart disease, they were not corrected. Cancer, right. Right. Anything like that. So basically, you don't really know. I mean, for all we know, maybe the supplement user group was is more it, sick. Right, right. Or is exactly, is exactly. It, it, it could be that the supplement user group was exactly the same as the rest of the population yep. if you're not correcting and, for these things. And here's the thing, too. Understand that now, and, and, and this is going to be hard, I think, for us to understand, Carl, and this may be hard for your listeners to relate to this because we're proactive about our health. I'm doing supplements to prevent things, and so are you, and we're building muscle. We're, I mean, we're, we're a different mindset, okay? You right. have to understand that. Right. The average person, guess when they start taking supplements? When they're sick and the drugs don't work. Yeah. So you have a group of supplement users that most likely, if you look at the average person out there, is taking supplements because they already have something, yet they did not correlate that at the beginning of the study. Uh. That's a big one, isn't it? Yes. That's number four. Everybody got that down? Yes. I think you're – okay, we're ready? Number – are you writing this down too? I am. Oh, I am. Okay. Yes, yes, I am. I am. <laughs> number five, uh, the authors did not um, – appropriately follow the study participants closely enough to make any sort of conclusion, okay? So it's not only that they didn't confirm, um, they literally only collected the data at three points throughout the, the length of the study. And for you to statistically draw a conclusion, that's, that's not valid. That, no statistician would let you do that, okay? Right, right. The authors even admit, here, you ready for this? This is a direct quote from the study. You ready for this? Yes. The authors even admit, quote, we did not have data regarding nutritional status or detailed information of the supplement user group, end quote. So basically, basically saying, telling you? Say, saying that we didn't have any other information other than whether or not they took supplements. Yeah, based on a questionnaire that they only checked three times. Right. You see, do you, I mean, uh, right, I mean, uh, am I, it, it, does the, this supp the supplement group, the supplement gr group could have had the highest degree of cigarette smokers in it, for all we you know. You don't know. Yeah, none of that, none of that stuff was correlated. And I just, and it gets, I, I don't know, Carl, I still have one more point, but I just want to stop for a moment and let your listeners know that as a, as a medical doctor, and I'm not a statistician, we have people that do that for us. I mean, that's why whenever you do a good study, whether it's a population study, whether it's, uh, clinical research, whatever it is, you hire a group of statisticians that can that that make sure you don't make these kind of mistakes. Where were these people in this study? I mean, any statistician, any 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 person that understands clinical population study statistics knows that what they're doing is completely wrong. Yet, where were these people? I guarantee, if Life Extension tried doing this, we would be nailed. Right. There's no way we could get away with this. How right. did they get away with this, Carl? I don't know. I, that's what I. It, it's frustrating. To you me know. You know what. You know what's equally frustrating to me. And I'm not a big Dr. Oz fan, but the FDA came out against Dr. Oz's type of uh, uh, analysis that he did. <laughs> he did of of arsenic in, in apple juice. Yeah. But but why isn't the FDA coming out against this group's analysis? Well, of, 
we, we know why, because they want control over this industry. Right. It's all, it's not a coincidence. Right. So that's okay. So that's five things. You got those five down? Yes, I got those let's five. Go, let's go to the sixth thing. This is another mind blow. It uh, just, just blows my mind. I, I almost become speechless, okay? And that's, so understand that I'm frustrated when I tell you this, Carl. Um, about double the number, this is number six, about double the number of supplement users, they took non bioidentical synthetic hormones versus non supplement users that was one thing because part of this um, this was the Iowa women's health study right and one of the things they were actually looking at specifically was hormone use so this is one area that they actually have data forget they didn't have data on heart disease they didn't have all that but they did have data on hormone use because that was one of the purposes of the, the study. study right yeah so they actually have that information what they found was that about double the number of the supplement users took things like Provera and Premarin. Premarin, right. Which, which is we synthetic. know right. are horrible they for cause, you. They cause hepatic stress. They're synthetic. There's all sorts of things wrong with them. Yeah, so the fact that you have I – mean, I, I, it is kind of funny almost, isn't in it? Fact, <laughs> in, fact, in fact, it could be said that – I mean, the way they extrapolated, I could extrapolate and say it, it could be said that uh, supplements do not protect you when you're using synthetic hormones, yeah, uh, because yeah. synthetic hormones cause, will kill you faster. Yeah, and so, so I, I totally agree with you. And so the fact that the group using the supplements took these dangerous hormones at double the rate, it just adds to the discrepancy between the two groups, doesn't it? Yes. You, just, you don't really know what you're comparing now. So, so, so the so non-supplementing group did, did not take these hormones at that rate. No, the, the supplement user group was almost double the rate of the non-supplement user group. There, there's, the, there's the culprit. There you go. <laughs> there's the culprit right there. Yeah, there you go. So here we have, let's just review. They didn't confirm anything, especially when they had a chance to look at iron levels. And, and if you're going to implica implicate a drug or a supplement, you should look at levels and stuff like that. And that's and an iron blood test, Carl, is pretty darn cheap and easy. Yes. Okay. Yes. Number one, so they didn't confirm anything. Number two, the two groups are totally different. Number three, they used questionnaires. Number four, they did not check for pre-existing heart disease, cancer, stuff like that. Number five, um, they didn't follow these people close enough. They only used three data points to do the surveys throughout a very long period of time. Number six, the, the supplement user group were taking a bunch of dangerous hormones. That we now, know that we know have all sorts of problems. Yeah. So if your if your listeners can take those six points, and I think those 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 are good solid six points that I think that your educated listeners can use now as talking points to educate their family and friends about this. Because I got to tell you, the, the the average person out there is just is they. It, They're in the, the headlines dark. get them. Yeah. The headlines get them. Don't the, the, those those sensational. Crazy supplements kill you. By the way, that was on. Um, oh gosh, I just forgot the name of the magazine, Carl. Um, I'll remember it. But one of the magazines had literally your supplements could be killing you. That was the headline. Yeah. Well, that's why, and that gets people to buy things. That's what Doctor Oz, Doctor Oz, resorts to that sort of stuff in order to get people to tune in. Those same yeah. types of sensational uh, approaches. Here, let, me, let me. Do we have to take a break? Well, I'm say we, one more thing. no. Say one more thing, and then we'll take the break. Okay. Here's what I also want you to know: that the um, when they were collecting data towards the end of this study, um, and this I guess kind of goes on maybe with point number six, they actually showed that initially women taking vitamin C, D, E, and calcium had significantly lower risk of mortality. However, what they did when they finally came to their ultimate conclusion, they combined that iron and copper data. They were also looking at iron and copper, which we know those are metals, by the way. And if right. you do a lot of iron and copper, you are going to have problems. Does that right. surprise you, Carl? No, not at all. No, not at all. So they added, they took this group that looked like they were doing pretty good with vitamin C, D, and E, and calcium. They combined them with these other people doing iron uh, and copper, in which, by the way, the people doing iron, it came from a prescription from their doctor, not a supplement. They right. combined all that data, and then they showed that slight increased risk of mortality. They basically took out the decreased risk of mortality with that vitamin group. And, and But didn't they say that calcium was good to keep, continue taking in that? Yeah, they did. At the very end, they said, oh, by the way, it looks like calcium's okay. But they didn't mention C, and, D, and in my e, opinion, which calcium, shown to be okay. In my opinion, calcium <laughs> calcium is dangerous to prescribe unless you know how much calcium a person is getting in their diet. Okay, let's uh, ab do, Absolutely. Let's do this. Let's take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we'll pick it up with more of Dr. Michael Smith. You're listening to Superhuman Radio. You're being educated. We'll be right back. Yeah. 